First of all, I want to uh, welcome you to Uganda Cancer Institute and to Uganda in general. With myself, um, Jackson Orem. Uh, I am a medical oncologist by background. Actually, I did my medical college training in the US. I was at uh, um, Cleveland in the at the case western is at university, particularly at the uh, University Hospital of Cleveland. Of Cleveland, many, okay. Many, many, many years ago. Okay. I was there actually from 2002 to 2004. Right. And then after that, I came back. But since, as the Uganda Cancer Institute. Yeah, pleasure to meet you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, good morning. Good morning. <coughs> I'm Ruto Israel, and uh, I had uh, Oncology department, but I'm a radiation oncologist uh, by training, as well as a radiologist. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Nick Sukunzima. Yes, I am a head research and training, I'm a pathologist and cell biologist by training. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Solomon Kibunde, I'm a radiation oncologist here at the Uganda Cancer Institute. Thank you, we met on email. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. My name is Alfred Jato. I head community cancer services. Oh, nice. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Osinda Goodfrey. I head the clinical support services. I am a radio pharmacist. My name is Albert Amos. Currently, I'm heading the regional cancer center of northern Uganda. Oh, nice. Thank I'm Okago Paolo, head finance and administration. Pleasure to meet you all. Uh, I think it comes to me now. Uh, my name is Vivian Kopsinje Birchall. My uh, background actually, I worked here in Uganda before moving to the US with the National Planning Authority. This is my passion. I love to tell the stories. Many of them are untold or falsely told about uh, you know we Africans, we black people, we the, we the diaspora and um, being a part of the Global Health Catalyst gives me the platform to really engage with the different stakeholders. We find ways to collaborate and build, bridge the gaps because, you know, we, as you know, when I take an example of Uganda, we have, uh, we have some needs. Yes, we are on the right track. We are making progress, but we uh, have some needs. And part of this uh, meeting here is to figure out ways to how the global health catalyst can work collaboratively with Uganda to to support the infrastructure here to support you all to make sure that you know that our people get the services that they need and have a chance at life so it's I'm so excited to be here uh, to learn from you about what's going on and to you know bring some ideas about the different ways that uh, our global health catalyst can work with uh, with the Cancer Institute and uh, whatever you are doing. And I think you have been in constant communication with Dr. Wilfred Ngua, who is the director for the Global Health Catalyst. And uh, one of the pri priorities, I think, in the coming years is to expand President Biden's cancer moonshot uh, to uh, Africa. And uh, Dr. Jackson, you have uh, probably had extensive conversations with Dr. Ngwa along those lines. So we will, part of what my mission here today is to figure out ways that you would want to see Uganda be a part of that expansion of the cancer moonshot to Uganda. So uh, I think we'll take it from there. I don't know what your your thought process was and how to manage this meeting, but over to you before I take it on. Yeah. yeah. So, so the, the, the first thing actually when I was contacted by uh, Wilfred uh, about about this, and as you said rightly, uh, we have been figuring out you know, myself from this side and then him from the other side and others actually figuring figuring out how we can be a part of this. Um, and the reason why uh, we took that approach, at least on my side, and especially for Uganda, is because we don't want to lose <coughs> our own the important uh, historical background and significance uh, of Uganda in as far as uh, cancer research in Africa and globally uh, is concerned. Uh, the first point is that uh, uh, cancer research actually uh, in Uganda uh, started way back uh, 
uh, and it will started collaboratively. And most significant, we the collaboration with the United States government through the National Cancer uh, Institute. In 1967, they actually came to Uganda and working together with Makere University, Mulago Hospital, uh, and the Ministry of Health, um, the government of Uganda uh, as a whole, established uh, the Uganda Cancer Institute, uh, riding on the back uh, of the discovery of Bakisil lymphoma uh, here in Uganda still in 1958. And uh, Bakisil lymphoma was such an amazing uh, disease that for the first time here is a cancer which is found in Africa and you know it grows very rapidly and it has the premise of actually uh, being treated uh, using uh, the then new uh, uh, treatment which was still experimental called chemotherapy. So every uh, cancer researcher what is name and sold they to pay attention to that and the place to be in order to kind of reap the benefit was in Uganda. And actually that is how the National Cancer Institute picked interest in Uganda. And the best thing to do is to establish a platform uh, for uh, research to be done here uh, in testing uh, newly discovered chemotherapy drugs, clinical trials, and that is actually how the Uganda Cancer Institute came. So um, this collaboration went on until it was disrupted because of the political upheavals in the country in the 70s during the Idi Amin era. Actually, that is when kind of the collaboration was scaled down and then the institute was handed over to the government of Uganda. <coughs> um, but of course, there were also other instabilities during the 80s. And then, of course, um, again, the advent of HIV with the challenges and all that kind of thing, whereby, you know, um, the diseases like cancers were kind of backpedaled. Uh, of course, infectious diseases, including HIV, malaria, and all that kind of thing, were the areas where, you know, most of the funding and research activities went into. Until the eight, uh, 2000, uh, to maybe the current, that is when our government then actually realized that the non-communicable diseases, cancer being the for, at the forefront, were actually major issues, and they needed to revamp the institute, give it more funding, give it more visibility, and I think that is now where we are. And we are coming is actually to partly also highlight that, and maybe bringing uh, out to the world that you know the. Uganda is back on the path uh, from where uh, cancer research started in the, in the 60s. We are available and when the issue, uh, the excitement of the moonshot came up and then I kind of linked up with uh, Wilfred, uh, we decided that you know, we need to highlight this not only for Uganda but for the entire Africa by uh, putting up something. We actually wrote an article which was published in eCancer to advocate and to say, wait, I think Africa should also be at the table in as far as this is concerned. And so um, I think really your coming uh, is going to be to us highlighting some of this and actually positioning the Uganda Cancer Institute. And Uganda actually as a very, very important uh, participant as far as this is concerned. So if ever there is anything that can be done in that line, we are more than ready. Uh, with the infrastructure development, as far as uh, uh, human resource capacity development plans that we have, that you see and capture, I would say there is a strong case uh, for uh, a center of excellence actually uh, being established here. And that will also ride on already initiative that is being uh, um, supported or propagated uh, by the East African uh, community governments where they decided that this issue of non-communicable diseases given that uh, first of all they are very difficult to manage, they require a lot of expertise and they are expensive. None of the governments in the region by themselves 
can actually uh, do it alone. So they need to kind of come together. So they have constituted what they call the uh, East Africa Centers of Excellence for all these different diseases, uh, whereby each of the countries uh, has some relative advantage in as far as some of these diseases are concerned. You share whatever you have with the rest of the member state countries. So they divided the different diseases. Uh, Tanzania, for instance, is supposed to be spearheading cardiovascular diseases. So the East Africa Center of Excellence for Cardiovascular Science is actually Tanzania. And then Kenya is supposed to uh, spearhead uh, renal diseases and um, nephrology as such. So you'll find that the East Africa Center of Excellence for Kidney Diseases is in Kenya. And then with the history that I've given you, there is no better place uh, for spearheading oncology than uh, Uganda with the background that you know we have been in cancer research for now over 55 years. So the East Africa Center of Excellence uh, for Oncology is actually here in Uganda at the Uganda uh, Cancer Institute. And you are going to see some of the infrastructure development in line uh, with that that we already have uh, uh, in, in place. And then uh, Rwanda is actually taking uh, biomedical sciences and then uh, e-health and then Burundi is spearheading nutritional um, uh, diseases. So the center of excellence uh, for nutrition, uh, nutritional sciences is actually in Burundi. And then we have just brought on board um, uh, South Sudan, who is a, a new member state. And then I uh, think the Democratic Republic of Congo also will be coming uh, on board very soon with their own projects. So that is from the regional uh, perspective. So you can see that actually already within uh, the East Africa region, live alone within the countries, there is already something that is, that is being done. Mm -hmm. So that is the background that I wanted to, to give you before I hand over to my colleagues. And I know the project that we are starting with, we are with uh, Professor Uwa, mainly is in radiotherapy, but we thought that, you know, let us take advantage of this also to highlight other areas uh, so that there is a comprehensive approach uh, to the to the to, to the to the to the whole issue, and I should not also forget that uh, uh, we engage also our ambassador uh, in the United States, uh, Ambassador Kakonge, uh, who has also been very supportive, and she has worked together with our Minister of Health, uh, Dr. Jenru Ache, who might thought you should meet, but I'm told she's out of the country, so that. That means you may not have an interview with her. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, I will. I hope to um, find a way of interviewing her, whether it's through Zoom or other ways. And I mean, this is just the start of many visits that we hope as the GHC to come back to Uganda. Uh, we have been in touch with the Ambassador Kakonge. Actually, I've interviewed her. <laughs> I've, you know, uh, I've uh, engaged with her. Recently, we had a panel on on healthcare investment in Uganda, I, which I moderated uh, on her, at her request uh, in Massachusetts, uh, engaging the Ugandan diaspora. So she is, as you said, passionate about making sure that we get, uh, we get the collaborations we need to improve uh, healthcare, cancer care in Uganda. So I'm, I'm glad that uh, she's a partner in this. Absolutely. I know you've highlighted the different ways that um, we've made progress with the Uganda Cancer Institute. But what are some areas that you would specifically want to see some collaborators coming in to help to make it even better? Uh, we've talked. You've talked about uh, you know research and uh, training, and it's good that this room has different people who are doing it, who are in different departments. We have the labs. We have. Um, oncologists all kinds of oncologists so what are some areas if the GHC was looking to perhaps even interest other collaborators in supporting Uganda uh, areas that they could really pitch in yeah I think uh, I, I'll ask also my colleagues to, 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 to chip in 
but we have, I would say, the whole array of areas where uh, collaboration can actually happen. <coughs> of course, uh, research is a very important area, and then um, um, training is also very important. And uh, in as far as uh, research is concerned, this building we are in is actually a research building that came about as a result of a collaboration that we have forged uh, with the Fred Assassin Cancer Research Center. I'm sure you must have heard about them in the United States. They are based in Seattle. Um, and uh, we, we, we started planning for this, uh, I think, around 2006. And I just returned from the US. And with all the kind of contacts that I have made over there and questions that people are asking, one of the things that came out very, very clearly is that uh, research cannot be done in an environment which is not very conducive. And one of the things which is really needed is infrastructure. So we prioritize that and to cut a long story short, this building is here, uh, fully fledged with a research laboratory and all that. But this is just a drop like in the ocean. There are many other areas. For instance, here we are mainly uh, focusing on for instance, um, infection-related malignancies, and there are many other malignancies which are out there, which are caused by other uh, areas, and that means there may be other collaborators that are interested in those type of uh, researches. So there is still room for them actually to come over, and then we do something similar, or maybe even uh, you know, synergize. You know the way uh, uh, we can. Uh, uh, put up the infrastructure and the programs and all that kind of thing. And then of course training is another area. We need to develop our human resources. Um, uh, I think for me to train in the United States, just one person I think took a lot of money. Um, and the chances that you know somebody can also not come back is also very, very much there. You know the temptations are there. Uh, may be a good thing, may not be a good thing, but uh, the fact that you know we can develop that same capacity using, for instance, the infrastructure that we have already developed, and then some of the expertise that is already on the ground, we can mount similar programs actually here. And we have already started some training programs uh, in medical oncology, in radiation oncology, uh, in pediatric oncology, you know, gynecological oncology. And the products are as good as any from anywhere in the world. But what we do need is support. We need to be kind of up to date. We need to be connected uh, with the rest of the world. And that is where the collaboration actually becomes very important. And then once in a while, you know, they need also for our own uh, products to go and interface uh, with their colleagues outside there, uh, you know, so that, you know, we kind of can compare notes and then also exchange expertise and experiences so that when they come back you know they are all round you know whatever they're doing here is as good as any oncologist doing anywhere uh, in the world and i think that is actually one of the areas that we needed to emphasize but you know you can have research and you can also train people very well but the real beneficiary of that should be the care that we deliver and I think that is also another big area where collaboration uh, is needed.